Hey, what's up, Vanguard? My name's Chloe Yelovic, and I'm your media chaplain for the year. And I wanted to say welcome to My Story Matters Monday. This is a new full chapel credit opportunity where different students are gonna be sharing their story throughout the semester. All you have to do to get your chapel credit is watch a video and then fill out the WUFU form. That form's gonna be a little different than normal because instead of filling out a bunch of paragraphs about how this story impacted you, all you have to do is write a letter of encouragement to our speaker and you get your credit. I love this because not only do you get to hear an awesome story about how God has impacted somebody's life, you get to encourage somebody because we're going to send all those letters to our speaker as a thank you for sharing their story. So I hope you're excited because I know I am. Our first speaker this week is sophomore Rachel Birdsell. My name is Rachel Birdsell. I'm from North Dakota. I'm a student here at Vanguard. I am a sophomore studying theology with the focus in intercultural studies, and I'm planning to get my minor in global women and justice. At Vanguard, I'm a part of the honors program and the SFD team this year. I am the media chaplain apprentice. Give some claps for our media chaplain editing this video. Let's go. Um, I'm honestly here just to share my heart with you guys, what God has done um, in my life. Just want to say this before I start. It's all glory to him. I'm sharing my testimony with you guys today. And um, none of this I could have um, ever done without God. And hopefully it points you to straight back to his heart. So this is my story. Um, I grew up in a very, very small town, North Dakota. There was not a lot of diversity in culture. And so I grew up in a very sheltered place. They saw women as um, very much lesser than men, which is a sad uh, contrast to what we see, what I have seen now in California. Um, so growing up, I was very insecure from like, from kindergarten till my senior year of high school, I struggled majorly with insecurity that was mainly rooted from my father and I's relationship. So my dad, when he was growing up, he struggled so much. Um, his mom was an alcoholic and her, his, his mom's dad was very abusive to her. So it's this long string of abuse that's now been brought to me. And my dad started emotionally abusing me and my family when I was very young. The earliest memories I have of my dad are him threatening to leave us or him threatening to commit suicide just to get us to do whatever he wanted. It was this big manipulation game. And I really felt that my dad didn't love me or care about me at all. Which is sad because you're a seven, eight year old girl wanting love and affection, wanting your dad to care about you. But I felt that my dad hated me. He would scream at me, tell me how worthless I was. I just felt defeated. And the culture around that time obviously wouldn't advocate for me because women were viewed as lesser. So I was in this trap of just worthlessness and I thought I was worthless and I didn't feel any love and this kept growing my insecurity kept growing I get made fun of in school because of my weight or how I looked I didn't love myself and I certainly didn't love the people around me and at this time you know I was raised in the church but I never knew about never knew about the love of God I just knew that there was a God and he wanted something something to do with me. I didn't know what that was. I didn't know about his love. I didn't know about his grace. I was so desperately spiritually dead and lost in sin. And the cycle kept going and I kept getting more insecure. My dad kept threatening to leave. It got worse, yelling at me every day, like so, so bad. And so in my desperate cry for help and wanting love and wanting that affection and care, my sophomore year of high school, I ended my first relationship with a boy and man, I thought this guy was it. I thought he was gonna love me. This love that I've never received from my father, I thought he was gonna love me. I thought he was gonna take care of me. But the truth is guys, he just wanted, he wanted much more than I was willing to give. But I didn't view myself as worthy. I didn't view myself as, as something that was worth waiting for. I viewed myself as nothing. So I thought, what does it matter if this guy takes advantage of me? Because it's just this love. He's just giving me love. I guess this is what love is. Guys know that's lust. And I started 
entering this really, really impure relationship with this guy because my own father didn't love me. Obviously, I didn't know this at the time that this was the root of all of my issues with this guy, but the neglection from my dad and not knowing that I had a father in heaven who loved me, I, I ran straight towards relationships and straight towards lust. And there's a clear definition when I look back now that love is not lust. Love will be patient. Lust is greedy. So this guy was so greedy and pushed my boundaries, pushed me so hard and I gave in because I didn't value myself. I thought if he would love me, I would finally feel whole again. That this void that I was searching to fill would finally be full. I'm gonna tell you guys that lust and sexual immorality and broken relationships with guys and broken relationships with girls will never fill this void of love in our hearts that only God can fill. But of course I didn't know this at the time. I always knew, I always knew there was a God, but it's never been intimate for me. It was just this knowledge. So I'm in this relationship with a boy and I'm like, dang, we are going to get married. He is it. Like, ooh, wedding. Ah, uh, man, I was so ignorant and naive. And he broke up with me and got with a girl like three days later. And man, whoo, that, that made my insecurity level just rise because this guy told me, wow, I was his everything. Wow, I made him happy and like he made me feel love or what I thought was love, but really lust. And I was left broken and empty. And I would love to tell you guys at that point in my story, I turned back to God and I came running towards him, but I didn't. I ran further in rebellion and got in an actual worse relationship than my first one. This guy I opened up way too fast, was way too vulnerable, trusted him with all my being, knew him for like two weeks. It was a mess, guys. I was a mess. He knew everything that, that hurt me in my past relationship. And he's like, oh, baby, I got you. I got you. I'm going to be the one for you. He told me everything that I wanted to hear, but it's not what I needed to hear. I needed to hear that I was lost and dead in my sin, that I just was running myself into a deeper pit, that I was so utterly broken that I needed Jesus, but this guy told me he could be my everything and I grabbed a hold. Because my dad still, dad still was emotionally not there, physically not present, not caring about me. So it's again trying to fill this void of love man, I look back on it now and I'm grateful what God has brought me through, but I see where I was. So insecure. I hated myself. I hated my dad. I couldn't even be in the same room with him. He made me so angry because he didn't love me. He didn't choose me. He didn't want me like I thought a dad would. And I certainly was mad at God because what I knew of God, it was this God who would save me. But why would my why wouldn't this God save me from these hurtful relationships, save me from an abusive father and a manipulative father? Why wouldn't he save me? Why wouldn't he be there for me? I think we all ask that question sometimes. Where are you, God? I, I was at that place. I was so angry. I was so bitter. And so I dove deeper into lust with this guy. Guys, it's not filling. The lust didn't fill me. The lust drained me. The lust made me more empty. The boyfriend made me more empty. He made me feel good for like three minutes, but then he just wanted more of my body, wanted more of me, was not like, it was like his appetite was so large that he could never get enough. And it was the grossest thing I have ever experienced. And through that time with those two boyfriends, I actually experienced moments that I wouldn't have wanted to happen. I told you all that these boys pushed my boundaries, but they really pushed sometimes without my consent. I can tell you that if y'all have experienced moments where you've been taken advantage of or 
things have been done without your permission. It is never your fault that they did that to you. It is not a fallacy that was started in you. Like you didn't have to be, I wasn't strong enough to fight back. But what I can tell you is, is it their own problem of why they did that to you? It's not a fallacy in you. You didn't start it. You didn't cause it. You did everything you could to probably stop it like I did. And walking out of those moments, wondering where you're at, not feeling worthy, but it wasn't a random stranger who did this to me. It was somebody who confessed that they loved me and cared about me. But it was this sweet, sick, twisted form of love. And if you've ever been in that situation, I just want to personally like apologize. You did not deserve to be taken advantage of, nor did you deserve what they did to you. But I can tell you in this story of sadness and me driving, diving down deeper into these lustful behaviors, into more insecurity, into worthlessness, into hating myself, there is a redemptive theme pulling through it all, that even when my father was yelling at me, even when those boys were taking advantage of me, even when I was doing those lustful acts with those guys, God was calling out to me, daughter, where are you? I didn't even know he called me daughter, but he was saying, daughter, where are you? Daughter, I want you. And it was this it was this small whisper in my head that started after, I told you about the second guy, I'm gonna go back to that. I, this is the pivotal moment in my story. I went to this camp and at this camp, they talked about sexual immorality. I didn't even know what that was. My church didn't even talk about sexual immorality. They just told me not doing it. Like I wasn't supposed to do it. Yo, <laughs> educate, educate. Anyways, we're telling my testimony, not a sermon about sexual immorality. But this guy just started talking about like the the downsides of sexual immorality and what it does to our souls. And I was like, oh my gosh, like I'm relating to that. I feel empty. I feel broken. Like I feel, I feel all these, like all these, like I feel spiritually dead, which what I, that's what I felt. Now I put a finger on it. That's what I felt. And he's like, tonight I'm giving you guys an opportunity to confess your sins, confess your sins of sexual immorality to each other. And he like, and we got to pair off with people we felt close to. And that night, guys, something stirred in my heart so crazy. Sorry, that was a train. Anyways, something stirred in my heart so crazy. Oh my gosh, that's another train. I'm <laughs> gonna uh, shut that window. Hopefully, hopefully you edit this out. Please, God. <laughs> Anyways, getting back to the beauty of this point because this is a point where everything changed because i actually repented and i turned from my action because before i would just say god i'm sorry and keep doing the lustful things i was doing god i'm sorry keep doing the lustful things i was doing but i turned from my action and repented his grace was always there for me always there reaching out for me so that night i repented everything that i've done to one of my friends and she's like, Rachel, you got to get out of that relationship you're in right now. You got to cut that boy out. And for once, I was filled with the strength to cut off an unhealthy relationship. A guy who didn't even care about me, I was filled with the strength to cut that off. Like I said, I was insecure. I had no boundaries. I didn't even care about myself. And now I'm just having enough self-respect to care and cut this guy off. Like this was the big turning point for me. So I got home, cut this guy off, and there my journey started. I cannot tell you guys that I was healed in one night after I repented. I was healed from the scars of sexual immorality and the scars of lust and the scars of worthlessness. But from that moment on is the moment that I heard God in the smallest voice calling out to me, daughter, I want you. I've made you for more than this. He's made us for more than this. He's calling out to you guys saying, daughter, son, where are you? I want you. I've made you for more than this. You are dead in your sin, but I want to breathe you to life. And it was, 
it was crazy for me. Like, I just couldn't get enough of it. I wanted to know God deeper. I wanted to know who he was. And so there, junior year, my story started. My story has been this, this thing that's developing since I was born, but my walk with God truly began when I received his forgiveness in my heart and got out of my really, really messy, broken relationship. And it has been a messy journey. <laughs> I'm going to tell you guys, what you sow is what you reap. If you sow seeds of lust, you reap seeds of lust. And so I was dealing with this, with this, with the seeds of worthlessness fruiting up in my life and the seeds of worthlessness. And God was teaching me how to be an overcomer, but it was daily, daily surrender. I had to get to know the Father so my heart could only want him. I had to know Jesus deeper so my heart would not desire the things of my flesh anymore, the lustful things, the sexual immorality things. Knowing Jesus was the start of my story and is still, the, is still my story. Knowing God and knowing him deeper. So where does this all bring us to? Where, where am I at now? How has God transformed my life? I told you I was broken. I told you I was going after messy relationships. I told you I was insecure. I thought I was worthless. I hated my dad. I hated myself. I hated God. So how can God bring somebody out of that point? This is where we are now, kind of. God's still working stuff out of me. But from that moment at that camp, it slowly, slowly worked out. Like I told you, knowing the Father deeper. But I actually encountered a community, a church community, when I was a junior in high school. Surround yourself with people who will love you at your uttermost brokenness. And that's what changed my heart. I thought, wow, this church community really loves me. And I don't even love myself. Like, what the heck? How could they love me? But they showed me the love of Jesus was willing to meet me exactly where I was at, not where I wanted to be, not who I tried to be. I wanted to be this perfect Christian. I wanted to have it all together. But truth is, I was utterly broken and dead. And they showed me the type of love that Jesus gives us. And it's a love that meets us exactly where we're at. And that's for you guys. It's not just for me. It's not just for those who already believe in Jesus. It is for anybody, anybody who's watching this. The love of God wants to meet you directly where you're at. He met me in my brokenness. He met me in my worthlessness. And he breathed life into my dead bones and caused me to believe again, caused me to love again. So God taught me through community, through getting to know him, through spending time with him. He wrapped me in his love like a big old hug. And he showed me how to love myself. Man, oh man, that is a journey, my friends. If you struggle with self-worth, don't ignore it. Because it'll only build up. It'll only build up. See my story. It only built up into me wanting to fill the void. But the truth is, the one thing the one thing that God taught me that changed my whole entire perspective is that he was my good father. That when my dad couldn't be my father and when my dad wasn't a good father, the good father was always watching out for me, looking out for me. That he was good when my earthly father was abusive. That he was good when my father was screaming at me. That he loved me even when I didn't love myself. So I learned in those transitional years between junior year and senior year that God's my father. He's my good father. Even when my earthly father is a mess up right now, that I am loved because Jesus loved me at my worst and he shows me how to live. And three, that I don't need to cling on to the brokenness of my past and my old relationships are not my name. Lust is not my name. Jesus has transformed my life. I told you I was dead in sin. He has rebirthed me and made me alive in him. That I don't have to live in shame for what I've done because I'm an overcomer by the blood of the lamb. 
and the word of my testimony. So where I'm at now, God has lit my heart on fire for the nations. I so desperately want people to know Jesus as I have known him. As I have encountered him at my lowest, I want people to know him as well. Because I know one moment with God and walking a season with God can change your whole life. And it certainly changed mine. I also have a heart for those who have been taken advantage of, like I shared with you my story about that, um, about me being taken advantage of. But my heart's now for girls who are going through sex trafficking and human trafficking. I don't know where God's going to lead me in that, but currently right now, my heart's for my community. I'm not living at Vanguard. I told you I live in North Dakota. I started this house church community of just, I just want my community here to genuinely know God and know his grace and his love. Because our salvation cannot be based on what we do but only God's grace and his love. So no matter where you guys are at, no matter where you have gone, no matter where you're at now, the truth remains the same, that God's grace and his love and his mercy reaches out to you through Jesus Christ. He is that bridge into your life. Jesus Christ. That's my heart. I want people to know Jesus. Because Jesus, Jesus loves everybody around us. And so if I could have my way, I would want to be sent up into the nations, planting house churches through small communities around a dinner table, not in front of a big screen, but just behind the scenes working for, working for the Lord, because he has brought me from death to life. And there's so much promise in following Jesus. That's why I'm so excited to be a part um, of this whole journey at Vanguard because it equips us to be able to do that. And so if I could leave you guys with one thing, it's the redemptive story of what Jesus can do in your heart. See, I didn't make myself good enough and then Jesus loved me. The truth is at my worst and my lowest, he said, I love you. And that's a redemptive story of grace. God wants to redeem your life. He doesn't want to just leave you where you're at. He wants to bring you from glory to glory, from grace to grace. So I just challenge you guys, like where God's calling out to you, where is your heart? Where are you at? Even if you've been following him for a while, are you callous towards his grace? Are you callous towards his love? Even if you don't really know Jesus, what part of your heart screams out, I want to know you? What, what void in your life are you trying to fill by that destructive desire? Lust, pornography, sexual addiction, depression, sadness, like those voids can be easily filled by those things. But I'm going to tell you guys this, I've dealt with each of those issues personally, and I know that they will never fill your heart the way the Father fills it. And you will never be in such greater care. No one will ever love you, care about you, and desire you as God does, and he reaches out to you through Jesus Christ. He gave his son up for you. That's my story. I want my story to scream about how God reached in my utter despair and pulled me out. And now, guys, I didn't even share this. Now I have a healthy relationship with my dad. My dad, before this, did not know Jesus. God said, start praying for your father. And I started praying for my father, and my dad came to know Jesus. There's hope for your family, guys. It's a redemptive story of grace and love that is so consistent, that wraps around us like a big old hug. <laughs> I use that metaphor so much in this time, but I hope that through my story, you see that God can do the same thing in your life. And it doesn't matter who you are or where you're at. He just simply wants you exactly how you are. Exactly, exactly who you are. You don't have to be anybody else. He created you to be you and he's gonna love you for who you are. So I just encourage you guys to really ask yourself those questions of where's your heart at? Where am I at? 
and respond. And the reason why you respond is because to God, your story literally matters so much. And you're not just this small number, small person who goes to Vanguard who's overlooked. But your story truly does carry impact and weight. And the King of Kings, creator of all things, cares about it as much as I do. Thank you guys for listening. <laughs>